Hello, my name is James Azri. I'm a shop task instructor here at Matrix Train Institute. And today we're going to go over steering suspension components. Uh, first, which we're going to start from is the parallelogram setup. Okay, on our truck, on our parallelogram setup, we have right here is our steering gearbox. Right below the gearbox is our first armature. This is our pitman arm, which attaches to this shaft which then goes behind here. That bolts onto our center link. Center link goes right in the center. Coming off the center link is our steering stabilizer or shock for steering stability. Over here, this is where we have our left front inner tie rod. Following it down to here, our jam nut and our outer tie rod. Going on the other side, same principle. This piece right here is gonna be our inner tie rod, right front assembly. And going down here, jam nut, and this piece right here is going to be our outer tie rod for right front. Moving behind this guy, we have our sway bar. That goes across the front. And on each side of that sway bar, we have our stabilizer links that go from the stabilizer bar to our lower control arm. And then again, on this side, same principle. We have our right side stabilizer link pin, bushings, attaches to from bar to lower control arm assembly. Now moving behind here, we have our shock assembly, and ooh, right here, we're missing an important key item over here, our bump stops, which are yellow cushions that absorb the impact from lower control arm to frame. Those are completely gone. Then from that, we have upper ball joints. And then below that, we have our lower ball joint. Okay, moving on this side, same thing, shock assembly. Again, missing bump stop, that should be here. Okay, lower ball joint, and then our upper ball joint. Okay. Moving on down to the back of the vehicle. We have our shocks, right side rear, left side rear shock assembly. Then over here we have our leaf spring. Leaf springs are held on by shackles with a spacer underneath. This was probably once uh, adjusted or lifted a little bit. And then we have our shackle nuts right here, four of them. Going over to this side, same thing. Our leaf spring assembly. We have shackle, our shackle U-bolts. And then our four nuts at the bottom. Okay. Now, rear leaf springs, we also have two, one more item to uh, take a look at. On this suspension setup, these long bars going from this mount to the lower control arms on each side, these are your torsion bars. These help keep the spring action of the suspension, but it can also be adjusted as well from this guy right here. And this is going to control our height, whether how high it sits. And if it's uneven, we have to adjust it from here. And then the same thing on this side. There's our adjustment piece. Now, not all vehicles will look clean like this to be adjusted. So watch out when you're quoting stuff like this. Because you can get into a real bind real quick. Once you start taking this apart, you're going to end up having to replace a lot more than what you think. But we'll get into that later. All right, so... When we do our initial suspension check, 
first thing we're going to do is we have our vehicle in the air. We'll lower this down a little bit. Okay. We want to grab our wheel and we want it to shake it side to side. Now, keeping the lookout for it is you might need an extra pair of eyes or somebody else to shake the wheel. But what we want to look for is any kind of suspension play in our steering. And starting over here with this pitman arm, if this pitman arm were to go bad, you would have up and down motion as you were shaking the wheel side to side. Same thing with the idler arm over here. Idle arm is on the right hand side of the vehicle. And if we had slop in there, we would move up and down. Okay? We don't want to see any up and down movement from any of these two arms. Um, same thing coming over here. If we're shaking the wheel side to side, we can also too grab a hold while we're moving it. We want to check for any kind of sloppiness, up and down movement, any shaking in here. Same thing with the inner tie rod. We can hold it right here. And if this joint behind this boot has got play in it, uh, we're going to feel it, the slop in this inner part or grab a hold of the outer tie rod and then shake it and then you can feel the slop in the outer okay now also another thing too to watch out for is while we're inspecting look at our bushings look at our rubber boots if we see anything that's torn on our boots upper and lower a tie rod a CV axle boot that's torn uh, perfect example, these sway bar links, the bushings are getting cracked and worn out. We want to recommend replacing those. So we want to take a good look at our boots, because even though our joints are still good, um, if there's any kind of cracks, these boots are designed to protect outside elements. So if we see any of these that are torn or ripped, debris is going to get in there and it's going to prematurely wear out the joints faster. So we always advise replacement regardless if it's got play in it or not. If you see a boot that's ripped, replace. We come over here with our sway bar. If our sway bar bushings are popping out, or we can grab it and there's play in there, okay? We want to quote sway bar uh, bushings. Okay, and we come over here too, you can see some rubber torn up. You can see it, a chunk right here of the Stabilizer pin, okay, that's a perfect quote. Because when these things go bad, you're gonna hear like a knocking sound, especially if you shake and rock the vehicle side to side while putting your hand on this. This shouldn't have any play at all. And if you hear a knocking noise, most likely, check your stab links out. Also too, now we have the vehicle up in the air, right? We have to have this like some kind of jack stand to take the load off of this lower ball joint and also for the upper as well because right now all this load is on here so we can accurately check a dual arm patrol arm system on this setup right here because we don't have this a load underneath this arm so the proper way to check that would be to lower it down till the wheels about two inches off the ground lower it onto a jack stand and then using your breaker bar underneath the tire you're going to force it in an upward motion, and that's how you properly check ball joints on this setup. Okay. Okay, now I noticed the difference in side to side motion when I was doing my inspection on the front of this truck. So, as you can see here, I'm moving this tire a little bit, but the other one adjacent to it. It's not moving at all. So Terrence, if you want to zoom in, you can see that movement, that up and down movement right there. Okay? That's what we don't want. Because as the truck goes down the road, if we have that kind of a movement, it's going to cause our tires probably to start developing a choppy pattern on it. So right there is a prime example of the arm moving up and down. So I would recommend replacing 
that uh, Pittman on, or I'm sorry, Eiler on. Uh, that concludes our suspension checkout. Uh, again, my name is James Asri, uh, shop task instructor here at Majors Trade Institute, and uh, today we just went over the parallelogram setup.